Hello people. In this video, we want to look at these books by Vishram Singh, General Anatomy, Anatomy, Upper Limb and Thorax, Abdomen and Lower Limb, Head, Neck and Brain. So these are the four books. So let's look at these books one by one. Let's start with general anatomy. General anatomy is basically about um, muscles, bones, right? Better let, look at the contents, okay? So here you have the anatomical terminology. So the anterior, posterior, medial, lateral, extension, flexion, sagittal view, all that you should know, those terminologies, okay? Then coming to the skin then skeleton then the joints okay so the bones you have to know the names of all the important bones right then coming to the muscular system then you have the heart blood vessels etc here they will teach you all about the vessels capillaries etc lymphatic system you should know the main lymphoid organs right lymphoid tissue then nervous system you should know so the brain and the spinal cord forms your central nervous system. Everything else will be peripheral. Then you have the endocrine system that is the hormones producing. So they will not have any duct, right? That's why it's endocrine. Then uh, digestive and respiratory system they are covering. Then the urogenital system. So basically the overall structure and uh, that is the anatomy that they are covering, right? Radiology, then genetics, okay? So... At the end of every chapter, there seemed to be something. Let's look at this. What is this? Golden facts to remember. Largest cell in the body is going to be the ovum if you are a female. If it is a male, then what will it be? MCQs. So MCQs, so they are asking all the following structures are derived from mesoderm except. See, muscle is from mesoderm, I know. What about bones? So bones and teeth are also mesoderm. Thyroid is not mesoderm. Okay. So here the vertebral column itself, they are giving a separate chapter. So you should know the different uh, uh, vertebra. Look, this is the cervical region, how the vertebra will be. Then the thoracic region, how it will be. The lumbar region, how the vertebra will be. Right. So you should know how the, what the difference is. If they give you the vertebra in your hand, you should be able to identify it. Okay, let's look at some other diagrams here. This one is the artery, right? Yes, a medium-sized artery because there's so much of muscle that you can see. So basically, diagrams are very good in Vishram Singh. Otherwise, the content has a lot of mistakes. MCQs will be helpful. And in this, they have also covered the clinical correlation. Major uh, diseases you should know, like of thyroid, you should know of goiter. That is nothing but the swelling of the thyroid. Swelling of thyroid is called goiter. It can become hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Okay. So then you have hypo and hyper. So goiter is nothing but the enlargement of the thyroid. Okay. So it is endodermal in origin, it looks like. So if you were wondering what is the correct answer for thyroid's origin, then it is endoderm. So here you can see uh, what syndrome Look at this epicanthic fold, right? And they have shown you the simian crease, just a single crease there and short in curved fifth digit. So what does this syndrome tell you? Down syndrome. So this is the genetics part of it. This is nothing but trisomy 21, uh, mostly trisomy 21, but it can happen because of other things also like Robertsonian translocation, right? Okay, so we have looked at the general anatomy book. So it is this thick. So we have covered this book. Now let's move on to the next book. So now let's move on to the upper limb and thorax. So that will be your left hand, right hand and your chest area, which will have important organs like what? The heart, the lungs, breast, right? So male and female both have breasts that you should know. So now let's look at this book. So the bones, they will cover the bones. This is the humerus, right? So you should know the bones. Then you have the radius and the ulna. So this one, what I see is um, the right radius and ulna, right? So the radius is more lateral. So always learn right side diagrams. These diagrams are very nice, though there are mistakes in this book. 
the diagrams are very good and always i would prefer to learn the right side anatomy right so then the muscles then the compartments these are the compartments so which compartment are you looking at so this is very useful look at this this is anterior this is very nice otherwise you have to sit and try to understand the 3d of it right from which side are you looking at this is very nice though there are mistakes like i'm telling so what do you see here the radial artery right radial artery this is that um, snuff box right yeah anatomical snuff box so here this area of it so you call it as the anatomical snuff box the radial artery is there here so at the end of every chapter they have given the clinical i mean at the end of every topic they have given the clinical correlation very important to know why you are reading it what are the important clinical problems that you uh, uh, come across right so you have the pleuritis right the inflammation of the parietal pleura pleural effusion so you should know how an x ray looks in pleural effusion and uh, even clinical signs you should know then coming to this one how do you do a pleural tap pleural tap and the diagrams also they have shown you what is this here you see a pneumothorax it has collapsed the lung has collapsed because there is air right are surrounding the lung in the pleural cavity you already know at the end of every chapter there is this uh, golden facts to remember and clinical case study there is no mcq but there is clinical case study in this book so this is the upper limb and thorax now let's go to the next book so this is the abdomen and lower limb so in the abdomen you have what and all liver pancreas stomach intestine everything i think even the pelvis they are covering here right urogenital lower limb so right and left limb also they are covering you can look at the contents here look at the some images and we we'll learn something what is this this is the arteries of the stomach so you have the trunk celiac trunk which is the source here you have the yellow yellow pancreas and the purple purple spleen spleen is purple why because it's lymphoid organ right what is this skirt mesentery of small intestine resembling a full skirt where is the diagram which is supposed to go along with this to tell me that it looks like a skirt hello kidney 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 okay at the end of every chapter what have they given similar clinical correlation golden facts to no clinical case study let's look at a clinical state case study abdominal aorta blockage was made so they know the diagnosis after all this what's the extent of, what is the extent of abdominal aorta so this is anatomy that they are asking it extends in the front of the vertebral column from t12 to l4 so that is the abdominal part of the aorta so you know the aorta it comes out from the heart right that one what is the commonest cause of the blockage of the aorta so here they didn't ask about the blockage of the abdominal aorta in general of the aorta itself they are asking so that is because of arteriosclerosis advanced then the name the term for the type of pain felt by the patient in recent times by this patient give the cause of the pain let's look at the answer claudication it occurs as a result of insufficient amount of blood reaching the legs during walking so that is claudication okay that much for now if you have learned enough claudication so this is the bladder that we are looking at what do you see here this is the bladder and what is this huge thing whoa what a huge ovarian cyst hmm and this is looking like a very important diagram the lymphatic drainage of the uterus so what is there at the end of this oh the mcqs are there at the end of the book nice 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 so there are a lot of mcqs here okay so this is the abdomen and lower limb so now last book we will look at that is the head neck and brain so head neck and brain um, brain i think is something like neuroanatomy right so let us look at this they are covering all the three in the same book so head means they are covering all your ENT struct ENT part also right 
So the skull, the bones, those all those foramina you should know. All the cranial nerves you should know. This one, this yellow one you see here, what is it? It's a facial nerve, right? This is very important. That's why any parotid surgery, you should be very careful because you can hurt the facial nerve. And in Bell's palsy, etc., what happens? The facial nerve is affected, right? Okay, I can see here the cochlea, cochlea, the inner ear, right? And this one is important. So what are you seeing here? This is the occipital sinus. So this is going to be the back of your head and this is going to be the front of your head. So this will be a left view, which should have ideally been a right view. They should have flipped and put. So this is the review of these books by Vishram Singh. So understand people that these books are only for the diagram. Otherwise you should read Chaurasya as the personal opinion. Chaurasya is un universal. For diagrams please refer these books. That's all for now. Bye bye.